This week, we're going to begin our studying of the human fossil record, beginning with hominin origins. Now before we do that, it's necessary to establish a little bit of the background out of which hominins evolved. The time period between about 22 million years ago and 5 million years ago is what we refer to as the Miocene. This is a time period that's known sometimes as the Age of Apes, because of the great diversity and abundance of apes that existed at the time. Now today, there's very few apes on the planet. We have a few apes in Southeast Asia, like gibbons and saimangs, orangs, and then the African apes, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas. But in the Miocene, there might have been dozens of species of apes living on the planet all at the same time. And even more remarkably, they weren't simply limited to these areas of Southeast Asia and Africa, but rather found throughout Europe, Central Asia, and all throughout different regions of Africa. The reason is that the environment and the climate of the world during the Miocene was quite different. The Mediterranean Sea, which today is a very closed body of water, was at the time a fairly open corridor of ocean, establishing a connection between the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean, known as the Tethys Sea. This open body of water created a different climatic pattern for the planet, that it allowed for tropical forests to exist throughout Eurasia, not just the tropical regions of the planet. Tropical forests are a great environment for apes, because they provide abundant fruit and high quality food throughout the year. This allows for the kinds of adaptations that we see in apes, adaptations towards devoting a lot of resources to extended development during childhood. However, the abundance of apes during the Miocene presents us with certain challenges as well. The fossil record for the Miocene is scattered over 12 or 13 or 14 million years, longer, almost twice as long as the entire human evolution record. And additionally, it's scattered across three separate continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of Miocene fossils, but the diversity they represent is very large, much larger than we think of in hominid evolution. So our understanding of Miocene ape evolution remains limited because of that fact. One of the important things to keep in mind, though, about Miocene ape diversity is that because there were so many, our models of what an ape looks like today are probably somewhat limited. The apes that exist today are the survivors. They're the ones that made it through the Miocene. They made it through the Pliocene. They made it all the way up to today and they represent only a fraction of the diversity that would have existed during the Miocene. A starting point for understanding hominin origins is understanding what the last common ancestor of humans and apes looked like. It was one of those Miocene apes. What form it had, though, what kind of morphology it had, what locomotion it had, what kind of diet it had, those are all important concepts that we need to keep in mind when we're establishing a model for the origin of hominins. Oftentimes, it's been assumed that the last common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees looked like a chimpanzee. But that's an assumption. It's an assumption we can test. It's an assumption we can address in the fossil record. But it's not something that we definitively know. Chimpanzees and bonobos have been evolving for just the same length of time as we have away from that last common ancestor. So that's an important factor to keep in mind. Now when we think of the Miocene and all these apes, there are a few factors also to keep in mind. There are a lot of different potential important genera of apes in the Miocene. Afropithecus, Kenyopithecus, Uranopithecus, Oreopithecus, Proconsul, Dryopithecus, Shivapithecus, more names than I care to keep track of. But again, it's important to keep in mind that these apes did a lot of different things than apes today. They occupied arboreal environments in different ways. They might have had different kinds of diets and different kinds of dental patterns than we see in apes today. They might have engaged in slightly different locomotor patterns than apes do today. They represented a diverse range of variation that doesn't exist today. As the Miocene began to come to a close, the global environment, the global climate, began to change. That open Tethy Sea began to close in its eastern half as tectonic forces moved Africa closer to the Middle East, turning the Mediterranean to the closed ocean that we see it as today. This created changes in the global climate pattern. The tropical forest across Eurasia gave way to temperate forests. Temperate forests, sadly, are not good environments for apes, and those ape species began to go extinct. Everywhere they went extinct except for regions of Southeast Asia and Central Africa. Somewhere out of these apes in Central Africa came the earliest hominid, the beginning of the divergence between humans and the apes. It's this point where our story, the story of human evolution, begins.